loves. Let's read a Streganona holiday story. It's called Streganona's Gift by Tommy DePaola. Everyone in the little village in Calabria, including Streganona, had been busy in their kitchens and at their tables since the month of December began. First was the feast of San Nicola, St. Nicholas, on December 6th. The children got to choose the food for this feast because San Nicola was said to love children. The next feast was on December 13th the Feast of Santa Lucia, St. Lucy. In her honor, a special pudding was made with soft wheat berries and ricotta cheese. As the weeks went by, Streganona kept Big Anthony very busy with errands. When Bambalona had to go back into the village to help her father, Papa Bombo, at the bakery, Big Anthony had an idea. Streganona, Big Anthony said, since Bambalona isn't here, I'm ready to help you in the kitchen. Oh, Streganona replied, that is very nice of you, Big Anthony, but I can manage just fine. Besides, you have plenty to do. You know, Big Anthony said with a smile, you're right, Streganona. That was a close one, thought Streganona. December 24th was La Vigilia, Christmas Eve. Every house in the village was cooking fish for the Feast of the Seven Fishes. There was no meat served on Christmas Eve, and no meat was eaten until after the Midnight Mass. After the Mass, everyone climbed the little hill to Streganona's for her annual Christmas feast. There were tables and tables of food. The Zambognari, shepherds from Abruzzi, were there to sing. The villagers and the children danced under the stars to celebrate the birth of baby Jesus. As a rosy light appeared in the sky, everyone went home for good. Big sleep. Everyone went home for a good big sleep. After all, there was still a whole week of festas left. On December 31st, New Year's Eve, was the feast of San Silvestro, Saint Sylvester. Big Anthony, Streganona said, you must eat your lentils and rice pudding. You won't be prosperous next year if you don't. Streganona, Big Anthony asked, will it be all right if I go down to the village to watch the New Year bonfire? Everyone will be there. Of course, Caro. Only be very careful when the church bell rings at midnight. Hide in a doorway or under an archway. You know that people throw old things they no longer want out the windows. I heard that Signora Anita threw her old stove last year. It nearly killed Signora Mare. I'll be careful, Big Anthony promised. Oh, and don't forget to wear your red underwear. Everyone has to wear their red underwear for Capodanno, New Year. It brings good luck. On January 5th, the Eve of Epiphania, Epiphany, the Feast of the Three Kings, once again, everyone was cooking, but this time for their animals. There was a legend that at midnight on the Eve of Epiphany, all the animals could speak to each other. It was because the ox and the donkey kept the baby Jesus warm with their breath in the manger. So the villagers wanted to give their animals a feast. No one wanted their animals gossiping with each other about how poorly fed or mistreated they were. Streganona was cooking wonderful dishes for her rabbit, her peacock, her dove, and especially her goat. Delicious smells that came out of the kitchen nearly drove Big Anthony crazy. So when Streganona called him in for supper, he almost knocked down the door. But there at his place at the table was a plain dish of pasta from Streganona's pasta pot. On the counter were four dishes that looked and smelled so, so good. What are those dishes? Big Anthony asked. Those are special dishes for the animals. It's a special night for them. There are carrots for the rabbit, corn cakes for the peacock, sweet seeds for the dove, and turnip stuffed with greens and chechi for the goat. As soon as you finish your pasta, 
Takes Ignora Goat's dish out to her, please. Big Anthony stopped outside the goat shed. I'll just take a tiny taste. Oh, that Big Anthony. Oh, that's so good, said Big Anthony as he tasted more and more. Santa Cello, it's all gone, cried Big Anthony as he looked down at the empty plate. He quickly filled the plate with hay and oats and left it at the window of the goat shed and quietly ran away. As Streganona tidied up her kitchen, she thought of all the villagers and how they had all worked so hard for their animals all day, and how they probably all had simple sumpers like she and Big Anthony. I will give everyone a gift, she said as she opened her ancient book. I will give everyone a wonderful dream, a dream about food. And sure enough, as each one of the villagers drifted off to sleep, everything seemed to turn to food. The fountain poured out milk and honey. The walls turned into ricotta and mozzarella. Bedposts became sausages and the bed sheets changed into sheets of lasagna. While the villagers were sleeping, the animals gathered in the square to tell each other what amazing food they had been given that night. The sisters gave us the most delicious fried fish, said the cats from the convent. What does Dragonona give you, Senora Goat? I don't know. Big Anthony ate it all before I even had a look at it. That's terrible, said the mayor's dog. What did you do? I ate his blanket, Senora Goat answered. I'll bet he's so cold that he doesn't sleep all night. And Big Anthony didn't sleep. And because he didn't sleep, he didn't dream about all the wonderful food. He was not only cold, he was very hungry. The next morning, the day of Epiphany, everyone except Big Anthony had full stomachs from the dream they received from Streganona. In the early afternoon, everyone gathered once again at Streganona's house to celebrate the Feast of Epiphany. First, everyone took a piece of cake. Whoever had the piece that had a fava bean in it became the king or the queen of the feast. Hooray, look, some of the men shouted. It's Big Anthony. They carried King Anthony around the table on their shoulders and sat him down in the special chair. Well, Big Anthony, because you are king and the three kings brought gifts to the child Jesus, what would you like for a gift? Streganona asked. A new blanket, Big Anthony answered. And, he added, some of that delicious turnip dish you made for Signora Goat last night. Pronto, said Streganona. Here you are, King Anthony, Streganona said, and buena note. Grazie, Streganona, said Big Anthony. Thank you. Then Big Anthony wrapped himself in his new blanket and knocked on Signora Goat's window. He held out the dish of turnips. Let's have a truce, he said, and presto. The holiday season was over for another year. The end. Buena feste, happy holidays. And descriptions of the holidays. I don't think my Italian roots help me out with the pronunciation of those Italian words. We'll have to do something about that for the next Streganona book. It's time for bed. Good night. Sleep tight. Auntie Kiki loves you.